doing this for lifestyle and they don't really care about profit but the majority of folks are doing this for profit and if we look at it as a for I, I work for a man one of the first men I ever worked for he just passed away and I Boyd Iverson he was a for-profit guy and it didn't matter how he looked how he dressed he was doing things for profit but he always took care of his animals and he did things not to be a cowboy not to be a cattleman but to be profitable and some of the things I've heard you talk about, if we can just look at them that way, it's going to lead us into, if we treat our animals properly, it will be profitable. Well, that's right. And one of the things that costs no money at all to implement is good handling practices. The only thing that that costs is changing your mindset on how you approach the cattle. A little bit of time learning. That's right. And you're going to need to learn. But we should enjoy it because how much, how much more enjoyment can you get out of going out and learning how to handle your animals better? And it's going to take practice. You know, especially some of the uh, herding movements out on the pasture, you're not going to learn that overnight. You've got to take some time to learn how to do it. Up in the handling area, some of the things in the crowd pen and the chute, I can train that in one afternoon. Uh, but the out in the pasture stuff, you're going to have to spend some time and want to learn it. But it's going to be worth it. Yep. Cattle is a very similar kind of animal, and we can train them. Yes. You know, there's been a lot of work on low stress handling where you get out amongst your cattle, walk amongst them, get the flight zone smaller, train animals to go through handling facilities. I strongly recommend doing that with calves and with new heifers yep. so they get used to going through the corrals, and you want to make sure you work them through the corrals the same way every time. Training animals works. bringing cattle in to a, to a gate from the pasture. We still got to be position ourselves. Sometimes we get it right straight in behind the cattle and then they start looking for us, which causes them to turn and go the wrong direction. Well, I also want to talk about all the ranchers that lead cattle. Lots of people lead cattle. And one really important thing is, I want to have a signal to get those cattle in, a horn, a siren, maybe the person's voice. You're talking calling cattle. I'm talking calling cattle, mm -hmm. yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Lots of people call cattle and I want to separate seeing a vehicle from the call. Another really important thing, if you're calling cattle and switching pastures, is you want your cattle to come up, stop, then you open the gate and switch pastures. You want the call to make them come up and then stop. Then you go through the gate in a controlled manner. I cannot emphasize enough when you're switching pastures, a controlled movement through the gate. There's a lot of different ways you can achieve this, but I don't want mamas running in there 100 miles an hour and the babies are ditched behind and getting all stressed. Well, one thing that I've noticed when we're trailing cattle, like bringing them in from the, out, in, from the pasture to the corrals, is so many times a horse or a four-wheeler, they go faster than the cows. So people are always crowding the cows and either the cows, your, your horse maybe goes four miles an hour and the cows are going three or two miles an hour, pretty soon you got the cows either going by them and they're turning back on you or they just get this, they won't go anymore because you push, push, push and they don't get a release. Well this gets back to pressure release. When they're going where you want them to go, you got to back off and ease up the pressure. Slow down, then you can put some pressure on. But you don't just do steady pressure. Yeah, maybe this is where that side to side kind of the That's right. side to side motion is beneficial with a four wheeler or a horseback. Maybe a foot, you can you can control that movement because you can slow your own feet down. But your horse, he's going to walk four miles an hour. And then no if they want to turn back, you got to back off, and then you got to zigzag, and you've got to back off of them. Another thing is, do not chase stragglers. Do not chase stragglers. Even I, if you're a good cowboy. That's right. <laughs> Let the motion of the herd attract the stragglers in. Yeah. So you'd probably just want to back up, hold the herd, let that animal come back on its own. That's right. And then if it's a great big herd moving, usually the stragglers will just follow along unless they've lost all visual contact. And there's a lot of different opinions about solid sides. Where the most important places where there's distractions like along the road at a ranch. Talk to one rancher, put solid sides on his loading ramp and the cattle no longer saw the trucks going by. That improved the handling. So we want them to see the handler. We just don't want them to see all the distractions. Well, that's right. Yeah. And on some of the curve shoots, the outer perimeter needs to be totally solid. And there's a lot of them where a solid side comes up 
about four feet, and then they can still see the handler. Or if you are using a catwalk, it should just be a little low catwalk. Sure. High catwalks are really bad. Yeah, but if, you, if they can't see the handler, then, they, then you have to resort to either noise or physical touch, and that's not as good yeah, as physical. and I vision. want visuals a whole lot better, and I want to get away from all the screaming, arm flapping that needs to stop. There's scientific research that shows that's extremely stressful to cattle. Yelling and screaming is a high-pitched sound. It's as stressful as an electric crowd. Whatever kind of system Whatever it is. Whatever system you have, it's fill that crowd pen half full. The other thing is, a crowd pen, no matter how it's designed, it's a passing through pen. You want to wait until the, the, the lead-up shoots are more than half empty, so you can just bring the cattle in, they can come on around, and pass through the crowd pen and go up the chute. You do not want to hold them, making them wait in the crowd pen. With the tub, any, the bud box, even the wing, you don't want to have them stored any in system. there. It's not a storage area, it's a, it's a pass through. That's a, a great way to put through. it. It's a passing through. Now, you can make a lot of different kinds of facilities work. There's a few things that absolutely don't work. You have a, a lead up chute that holds two cows. You simply can't get any flow. Or you have a crowd pen that can hold only two cows when it's half full. You're going to need to do something to enlarge the, uh, the crowd pen. Another bad mistake on round systems, and a lot of them are laid out wrong, is the tub doesn't go around the full half circle. And, also, and as they come around the half circle and they're looking up the curved chute, they've got to see a place to go. You bend too sharply, it's not going to work. So really, it, it, a lot of it all, you can be, have whatever kind of facility that you have, but if you don't have animal handling skills, the higher your skill level, the easier any system is going to work. That's right. And the higher your skill level is, you can make a lot of rather poorly designed facilities actually work. Yeah. I mean, one of the advantages of a well-designed facility is the skill level required to operate it is way, way lower. But regardless of design, fill the crowd pen half full. It's a passing through pen, not a storage area.